in the morning, I introduce to you an uncommon man of God. This afternoon, I want to introduce to you a soldier. He is a soldier to talk by six other soldiers. The first three soldiers are women. The other three soldiers are spiritual. The number one woman soldier happened to be the militant father of our father in the law. The second woman soldier happened to be an old soldier ethics principal of our father in the law. And number three woman soldiers of our father and the Lord happened to be one of his first pastor when he gave his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Actually, that pastor happened to be an old soldier. And the three spiritual soldiers that has trained our father and the Lord are the God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Our Father in the Lord enlisted. He enlisted in spiritual army in 1964 and he rose to the rank of a general superintendent a few years later. If you look around all over the world, there are many of us years, but there is only one general superintendent. And therefore, since he is a general superintendent, he embarked on spiritual military expedition in 1973 with about 15 soldiers in a flat at Unila University of Lagos. When he conquered Unila, he extended his territory to Lagos State. After conquering Lagos State, he enlisted some armies that ventured into all the states in Nigeria and they conquered all the 32 states of Nigeria. Eventually, this soldier of the cross that refused to be tired because he has a youth-minded heart, he ventured into all the territory in Africa and he conquered the country in Africa. As if that was not enough, this soldier eventually to go to the former political colonial master. And as he go to those political master, he established spiritual colonial entities. In, in Europe, in America, in Asia, in Australia. Why? Because he is an unstoppable mentor and therefore he launched spiritual missile to all over the world conquering satan conquering sickness conquering failure and therefore this soldier of the crown he has succeeded in raising up many other centurion that he named national of Assyrians and state of Assyrians, who are also they are commanding other soldiers under their territory. Recently, this soldier of the cross has decided to start Impact Academy, which is a youth, a global spiritual expedition with the aim of raising up young, eagle soaring soldiers. Join me today with this uncommon opportunity to welcome the field marshal, the spiritual field marshal of our of the army of the Lord, Pastor Doctor W. F. Kumuyi, the founder of the Palais Christian Ministry. Praise the Lord. He himself is a great soldier. Anybody who can talk like that. Must be a soldier himself. And you, from morning 
till midday, till afternoon, in the sun, happy, hilarious, joyful, victorious, conquering, ready to take on the world. I've never seen soldiers like you. You will excel. You will succeed. And the spirit of the conqueror, the Lord will implant in your life. There's no need to talk much again. Already, there is power inside you. And you are carrying victory. You are carrying triumph. You are carrying success. Everywhere you go, in Jesus' name. I want to announce to your world, the world that you are going to, I say, clear out of the way. Champions are coming. Soldiers are coming. Victors are coming. We we'll welcome you to the peak of success in Jesus' name. Now, my friends, my sons, my daughters online, I come to you. I want you to picture yourself as if you are the only one I'm talking to. The Lord is going to make an unconquerable, an unspotable, unstoppable, unbeatable soldier out of you. I'll see you on the top of the mountain. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, for what you have done, what you are doing, what you will yet do. I present before you your own sons and daughters. You have raised them up. You are sending them to the world to go and conquer the world for you. And I pray every stumbling block clear out of their way in Jesus' name. And as the champions arrive at their destinations, in their schools, in their colleges, in their universities, in their places of work, give them the seat of the champion. Give them the progress of the champion. Empower them for the life ahead in Jesus' name. Raise up everyone. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. God bless every one of you. You can sit down. We come to the final event in this program. Every part has been very, very important, impactful. The message in the morning, the seminar in the morning, the sharing that we had in various, various sections, the questions and the answers, my, those answers were great. And I pray they will bring solution to every part of your life in Jesus' name. Now, this evening, that is afternoon, I mean the last final event now, is the icing on the cake. You've got the real cake. Now I come to put some ice on that. Is that all right? So that you will lick your fingers while you are going back home. You will know something wonderful, unprecedented, is waiting for you as you go out there. You go outside that gate, and then you move into the arena of action. Huh. Something is happening in our country. Something is happening in the continent of Africa. And something happening 
everywhere, all over the world, with the youth taking over the world because of Christ in you will never be the same again. As we come to this final session, youth choir, God bless you. Everybody, help me say, youth choir, God bless you. You already gave us the message, soaring. I'm talking to you on soaring high on the wings like an eagle. Look at this in Exodus chapter 19, reading from verse 4. Exodus chapter 19, we're looking at verse 4. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. It's mouthful. The Lord said, I have taken you out of your dungeon, out of your captivity, out of your bondage, out of your defeat, out of the furnace of affliction in Egypt. And then he said, I bear you, I carried you on the wings of the eagle, and I brought you unto myself, soaring high on his wings like an eagle. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the privilege of starting on the wings of the eagle. The privilege of starting, starting a new life, starting a new journey, starting a new career, starting a new event, the privilege we have starting on the wings of the eagle. Number two, our progress. There's no shadow of doubt in my mind, you from today, you will make progress. See your amen. Yeah. Give me a chance to talk to my sons and daughters online. I'm talking to you. Today, from this very hour, hear me well. You will make progress. Yeah. The progress through shedding weights and entanglements. Number three, the power for soaring or wings after empowerment. Let's come to number one. Number one, the privilege of standing, starting on the wings of the eagle. Look at that again. Exodus chapter 19, reading from verse 4. Ye have seen, if you have not seen it, you will see it. In your own personal life, you will see it. Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I, the Almighty, I, your Creator, I, your Heavenly Father, I, your Redeemer, how I bear you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Now, when he does that, what's the Corollary to that, you know corollary. When we say one, two, three, four, and then we say now, the result, the after effect, the corollary to that is this. Number one, he forgives all sins. Every sin you have ever committed, when he takes you out of that Egyptian bondage, and he brings you up, on eagle's wings by taking you out of that place. Number one, he forgives all your sins. That's by the grace of God. Number two, he frees you from the shackles of sicknesses. And as you have come to this event, Impact Academy, the hand is of the Lord, of the Lord is upon you. 
the power of the Lord is upon you. He'll free you from all the shackles of sicknesses in Jesus' name. Number three, he feeds you for strength. You need strength to carry on, strength to overcome, and strength to be able to go through every challenge in your way. You will go through. No power will beat your back. No power will stop your journey. He, free, he feeds you with strength for strength. He gives you the word. And Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Number four, he favors you with success. You must succeed. You have to succeed. Like father, like son, God is not a failure. You are a child of God, you will not be a failure. He favors you with success. Number five, he fills you with supply. Every supply you need in your life, the Lord will fill you to overflowing. Number six, he forms you through salvation. When you come to the Lord and you are saved, the Lord who had formed you before, but sin deformed you, now, salvation will reform you. You'll be a new man, a new woman, a new professional. And you will see what you never saw before. The success you never saw before, you are going to see. Number seven, it feeds you for soaring. Feeds you. The feather, spiritual feather you need. And the spiritual strength you need. And the spiritual courage you need to spread your wings and soar above. He feeds you for soaring. That's the result. That's the outcome. That's the reward. That's the conclusion. That is the QED. That is the corollary to the fact that now he bore you up on eagle's wings and he soars and he takes you to the top of your life. You didn't hear that one. It will be done. It is done already. As you go, you are going to see that in your life. Look at Psalm 91, verse 1. In Psalm 91, verse 1, it tells us, He who abides in the shadow of the Almighty, He will be in the secret place of the Most High, and He shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Verse 4, it says in verse 4, He shall cover you with his feathers. Under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Let the recipient of the blessing say, Amen. Number two now. Number two, our progress. Why do I say our? Let me make it personal. My progress through shedding of weights and entanglements. Now, there are opposites in life. There are winds that will blow you in the direction of your progress. There are winds that will blow opposite the direction of your progress. But when weights have been all around you, 
and you want to move on, and you want to move up, and you want to scale the heights, you have to shed, drop the weights that will, that will tie you down. And I say, every weight, every entanglement in your life, shattered, scattered in Jesus' name. No weight will keep you down. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. I'm reading from verse 4. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're looking at verse 4. No man that worries entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. No man that worries. You know that we are at war. How? Knowledge is at war with ignorance. There's ignorance there everywhere. And then I come and I said, I'm going to wage war against ignorance. It is that war that got you your school certificate. Knowledge at war with ignorance. And then there's still some kind of ignorance waiting there. That's why we went to college. That's why we went to university. And then over there at war with ignorance. And the more you study, and the more you learn, and the more you get, and the more you imbibe, and the more you soak in that knowledge, we're fighting a war against ignorance. And then I come out of the university. I come to the workplace, to the marketplace. And I see the people that have stopped. It's like the thing, end of college, end of university, is end of learning. And knowledge is coming on and on, and they are left behind. All of a sudden, I wake up. I say, all that darkness that receded a little, but now it still covers everywhere. That's why we're going to technology, into research, into everything we're doing. We're fighting a war against ignorance and darkness. And no man that worries will entangle himself for the affairs of this life. I think you know this, but you can check up if you didn't know. The inventors of our day and the scientists of our day and the real researchers of our day and the technocrats of our day, you will not find them in the beer parlor. They don't have time for that. They're always thinking, they're always imagining, like Ashton said, that's the one who gave us the uh, science of relativity. And he looked at the light and the speed of light. And he said, if I could be there, how will the world look like? You're going to find that those people that do not think of impossibility, like the space science that they go to the very moon and they conquer the skies. You'll not find them in the beer parlor. You'll not find them with the idle people in their land. You'll not find them with the mediocres of the land. They never entangle themselves with the affairs of this life. That's how aeroplane was invented. That's how computers were invented. That's how all the scientific things, both in medicine, in biology, in chemistry, in physics, and everything, that's how everything is coming to life because the people who are ready to soar, soar in knowledge, 
So in science, they do not entangle themselves in the affairs of this life, that they may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Any soldiers still around today? Anyone? I'm looking for them online. Where are you? Are you a soldier? Uh huh. Stay with me because you're going to learn that the people who make it in life and the people who identify themselves as different, as unique. They do not entangle themselves with the refraps and the seeds of the flesh. What do they do? Number one, cut off all cords. The cord that ties them down. The cord that says, we're ignorant, but we're breathing. Is that not enough? You cut yourself off from all those calls number two come out of the cage come out of the cage i don't care how large your cage is as long as you are inside that cage you will not see far but the ego is not for the cage we open that door of your cage, you come out, you fly up, you soar in Jesus' name. Have you seen any student that will not reach beyond the little narrow textbook? Have you seen any citizen that will not listen to any news apart? from the news in their locality. They think locally. They speak locally. They perform locally. Why? They're in the cage of their locality. But when you come out of the cage and there you soar above, you will see farther than you have ever seen. Yeah. Number three, confirm True, clear conversion. Confirm, true, clear conversion. That comes from God. Through Christ, He takes hold of you and He looks at your life. And any sin that is shakable, He'll shake them out of your life. You know, you've been looking down at 27. You're walking like somebody who is 72, and it's like you cannot carry yourself. And then we we'll say, What's the matter with you? You're just 27. Yes, I've gone through a lot in life. Uh -uh. How long are you going to live? If you're going to live up to 60, you are not yet up to half of the span you will live. Rise up. And look up and stand straight and square your shoulders because the journey ahead will demand strength. So the Lord will turn your life around. It will convert you. It will change you. Spiritually, it will change you. Physically, it will change you. Morally, it will change you. And then visionary. You become a visionary, you will see more than you have ever seen. Confirm true, clear conversion. Number four, cast off the corruptors. You know, there are people around us. Their language can corrupt an innocent mind. Their outlook, their appearance, can corrupt any pure eyes. Their activities can corrupt any good, innocent, achieving personality. But if you're going to distinguish yourself, it doesn't matter where you are. A student, a college graduate or undergraduate, a worker, 
a professional, you'll discover there are people that will say, uh -uh, are you going to read all the books in one day? And are you going to be like a bookworm? Good for nothing? They are good for nothing. They know nothing. They don't design knowledge. They don't reach. And they want to corrupt you. And they want to weaken your energy and your strength. You know what you're going to do? If you're going to soar up like an eagle, you're cast off the corruptors. And then the people that will bring themselves and say, well, what's the use of reading and reading? There's another way we can get money. Money is the goal of their lives. And so they want to corrupt you. They say, what you are looking for, out of many years of study, I can get it in only one week. By corruption, they will not corrupt you. Okay, they will not corrupt me. I said they will not corrupt me. Cast off the corrupter. Number five, commit fully to daily climbing. Commit fully to daily climbing. Let today see you higher than where you were yesterday. Today, a little knowledge more. Today, a little achievement more. Today, a little success more. And you are asking yourself, how has today become better than I was yesterday? Every day must see you improving, increasing, and climbing up. And that takes a deliberate effort that I'm going to climb higher today than where I was yesterday. Number six, confide in the coach captain. Confide in the coach, in the captain, in the captain. Now, in the athletic world, we normally have those athletes, no matter how good an athlete is, he needs a coach. He needs a trainer. He needs somebody to say, this is the way how to do it. And he needs somebody that, while he's playing the game, the game of life, they take a video of him. And then, after that game, there's a playback. And the coach will say, watch now how you attach that ball, how you run that race, and they slow down the motion. And you will see himself, and the coach will say, what do you see? And he'll say, I see. I shouldn't have taken, you know, that bench like that. Or maybe it is the golf. I shouldn't have made the swing like that. And in life, you need a coach. We call him a mentor. And he has a model of success already. And you watch him and you follow his history. And you look at his life, and you look at how he plays the game of life, how he keeps himself up, and you model your action, you model your thinking, and you model your desires as the desire of that coach, captain, and then Christ, the greatest of all captains, and the captain of our salvation, you're looking at him every time, and he never failed. If you submit yourself to him and confide in him, you will never fail. I said you will never fail. I see in you the spirit of a conqueror. For you to be here, for you to stay, for you to stand there and sit there, in this weather, in this condition, you're looking for something. That thing you're looking for 
you will get it. I understand you online there for you to abandon every other thing and then to take time and to say, I'm going to get everything I can get out of this youth impact academy. You're looking for something, you've got it already. <laughs> Number seven, continue with Christ, the conqueror. Continue with Christ, the conqueror. Uh, have you noticed somebody is studying while at school, and when he writes the final paper, maybe in the secondary school, he waits, he says, thank God I'm through. And the next three months, six months, he said, I'm waiting for the jam exam. He reads nothing. He knows, he learns nothing. He's waiting in idleness, you know, is continuing in life. What you did last month, do it this month. What you do this month, do it next month. Is a repetition of I do it, I do it, I do it again. That's how we succeed in life. But if you do it only once and you quit, and you don't continue the practice and the process of achieving the project, you may not be where God has ordained you will be. But I will be there. I said, I will be there. Now, I need to tell you, no matter how much time you have lost today, we can start afresh. Are you there? I said no matter how much time I've been wasted and lost today, we can start anew. Let me introduce to you somebody, he'll tell you his name. He was on drugs and he wasted not less than seven years. Drops, drops. Became a heartache, headache to everyone around him. But it was impact in January. He came, I would say, reluctantly. And when he got there, like you are here today, I say like you are here today, something unforgettable happened to him. It's your turn. Let him talk to you himself of what happened to him. The story of my life is like a movie. It is still unfolding and I am still watching. I am Anusim Daniel. I am four years old, and this is the story of my life. Daniel used to be a very boy from bed. Hardly will you suspect Daniel of anything. A quiet, decent, very intelligent boy. I dreamt of being an aeronautic engineer, but something went wrong. I got into university, and I ran into bad friends. I was introduced to marijuana, and I started doing drugs. One year, two years, three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, I was smoking marijuana heavily. I got out of school, same thing, progressed. But God came through for me. In 2022, the Impact Global Crusade for Youth, held by Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui, came around in January. I remember the message on day two, that's letter M. It was titled, Moving Up from Mediocrity to Mastery by a Miracle. I come to take mediocres out of the dungeon of failure, and I want to take you to the mountaintop 
of mastery tonight in Jesus' name. That message seared my heart. It pierced my soul. He was speaking to me and the Holy Spirit's conviction came heavily on me. That very day, the story of my life changed. On that faithful night, I was like a woman that has been given the whole world. My son came back. His eyes were red. My son told me, I've met him, mommy. I said, you met him. Wonderful. Jesus, you've done it for me. I held him. We grieved ourselves. I told him I know. I was not serving him in vain. Ever since that day, mommy knew peace. No more strange smells in the house. No more coming in and he's looking down. Hey, boy, what are you taking? Hey, where are you people coming from? No more of that. Jesus took control of my life. And since that day, I have not touched marijuana. The smell of marijuana upsets my stomach to this very moment. And I can tell you by the grace of God, he has led me every step of the way from day one up to this very moment. I've been basking in the sufficient grace of God. I want to thank Dr. Kumi for such a wonderful program that was packed together for young people. Impact definitely had an impact on my life. Impact. Somebody shout, impact. Already? It's having an effect upon your life. You know, there are, there, are, there are some things too that come with us into life. You just find you are born that way. And medical science, medical science is good, great, they do wonderful things. But for this young lady, medical science could not help. I'll allow her to talk to you herself on the problem, on the challenge, and then how the power of God ruled everything away so that the same kind of miracle will happen in your life. I thought I wasn't a normal human being. I, I was always scared of telling my friends about it because it's not something I see like in everybody. Growing up with a double navel instead of one. Just my parents knew about it because I need to cry and cry and cry every day, complaining about how painful it was. I couldn't eat banana. I couldn't eat a whole lot of things. I just thought there would be no cure because the doctor said I need to go through operation. And I just knew that wasn't going to be possible because I did not have the money and every other thing to support me for the operation. Because he said it was, was it high in here or something. I don't really, can't really place my head on it. So I've been living with it for some time. The pains, I had to cry, and sometimes it feels like I'm going to pass out. But I just kept enjoying until this festival day when I, I went for the crusade. And after the prayers of the man of God, he was like, put your hands where you have your problem. Initially, before the prayer, I put my hand, I felt the double navel, like the first and the second one. So after the prayers, and he was, check up and check yourself if the problem is still there. I checked. I have really not been a part of a miracle before. Like, I've not had a miracle before. It's that severe. So when I touched the novel and I did not see it, at some point I was even scared of shouting hallelujah. I was like, is this true? Is this real? Then I touched, I feel, I got to push my hand inside. The hole was not there. That was when I started shouting hallelujah and I went downstairs to give the testimony. Then my mom was like, blessing. Ah, I'm so happy for it. And I needed to confirm if it was really true. So when we came back from the church, I had to eat banana. Because banana and we are not just in good terms. So after eating banana, I noticed that I, I stayed, I observed myself. The bed, the tummy didn't, I didn't have any tummy pain. The navel, the second one didn't shoot out. And since then up to now, I've been totally okay. You want to clap your hands? Praise the Lord. The same God, through the power of Christ, 
that did that for her and for, the, for him, the first one, that same God is here today. He will change your history. We are going to move high now. I come to point number three. Point number three, the power for soaring on wings after empowerment. It has come. We are coming back to Isaiah chapter 40. Look at verse 29. He gave it power to the faith. Your time has come. It will give you power. Now, after he has given you power, in a few minutes, was through, and you'll be going back. Let me tell you this. Soaring on the wings of the eternal emancipator demands, number one, not looking at difficulties. Difficulties, they have always been there, but not looking at difficulties. Number two, not listening to doubts and doubters. You see, I want you now to start a new level of success. And your closest friends will say, hmm, you think you can? We know you. We know you're what you've been. And we know all of the resolutions of the past. And nothing ever worked. Not looking to doubt us. Number three, not lacking in decision. You make up your mind. This day, there's a day in somebody's life that will turn his life around. And you make up your mind, this is my day. You will not allow your decision to drift. Not lacking in decision. Number four, not losing determination. You know, if you're going to amount to anything in life, you have to make up your mind. And then you say, here is what I was. Here is what I am going to be now. And I'm going to be the man, the woman, the lady, the gentleman that God has created and what he created me for. The Lord will do it. Number five, it says in number five, not living in discouragement. Don't say, I'm discouraged. Don't say, I don't know what I'm going to do. Rely on the Lord. It will take you up. It will move you up. It will move you on in Jesus' name. Number six, not leaning on deceivers. There are people that, okay, I'll help you. Okay, I'll lift you up. Okay, I'll sponsor you. Okay, I'll do this. If that other things work, deceivers, don't lean your life on deceivers. Number seven, not limiting your deliverer. He is a supernatural deliverer. He will deliver you. He will release you. And he'll give you the strength and the power to look, to fly, to ascend like an eagle. I want a better amen. An amen with the sunshine. Amen. He giveth power to the faith. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, it says, They that wait upon the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. I told you in the morning about wait, wait, wait. 
There are people that wait with their hands folded. There are people that wait with their eyes closed. There are people that wait in idleness. There are people that wait tied down, changed down, and they're not moving up. But as I read my Bible, and I see the people like Joseph who waited on the Lord, not in idleness. And I see people like Caleb who waited on the Lord, not in ignorance. And I see people like David waiting for their time while Saul was still there. They didn't wait in ignorance and blindness. They were making use of every day as they waited. Wait, W-A-I-T. What am I today? What am I today? I compare myself today with yesterday. This month with last month. This year with last year, what am I today? W A I T. What am I today that I wasn't yesterday? What has the passing time done in my life? Moved me up, jerked me up, and moved me on. What am I today? Can you ask yourself every day while you are waiting on the Lord? Can you ask yourself every time, what am I today that I wasn't yesterday? Which, W-A-I-T, that I watch actively, watching actively in transit. The universities in some places are closed. The colleges in some places are closed. And there are students that say they are on strike. Therefore, I wait. They don't read. They don't study. They don't drop minds together with people of the same department. They are waiting and waiting. But those who are waiting, waiting in reality, they watch actively in transit. Some people have finished secondary school. They say the forms are not out yet and the next step is not taken yet and we don't know what we're going to do yet and they wait in idleness. They that wait, wait upon the Lord. You are watching actively in transit. That is between that time you finish that course. Now you want to have this course in the interim. You're watching actively. You're working actively. You're writing actively. You're taking in knowledge actively in transit. And you don't allow any day to pass just to pass on like that. Waiting. W A. I T. That means winning attitude internalized tenderly. A winning attitude. Trust your mother, your father, your brothers, your sister, your neighbors, and everyone. You know, those who say they are waiting, you don't know who the Lord will send to you and lift you up. And take you to the mountain top. That's the reason why you treat everyone like the one the Heavenly Father has sent to you to fulfill heavenly goal in your life. And you treat everyone like a millionaire who is able to get you up. And get you out of where you are. You're not just saying, okay, this one cannot do anything. You have, you have a winning attitude while you're meeting other people and you internalize that tenderly. That's what it means to wait in life. 
and for you to be moving on until you get what you need to get. You will get it in Jesus' name. Amen. And the Lord himself, as we're watching actively, as we're waiting honestly, and as we're depending upon the Lord, the Lord himself will make sure that what you are every day will be greater than what you were in your yesterday. And this, the year 2022 is still about half. And the next six months, if Jesus tarries, a greater life will begin. A great ladder you will climb. And in your life, all that was spoken about and the prophecy of goodness in your life will be fulfilled and realized in Jesus' name. You'll be light. You'll be a ladder. The Lord will lift you up. The past is gone. Whatever happened in the past, forget. Forge ahead. Glory is ahead of you. What is he? What is she there? Why don't you rise up and say, Lord, here am I. Here am I. Here am I. Wait on the Lord. What am I today that I wasn't yesterday? What have I learned today that I didn't know yesterday? What mountain will I climb today that I couldn't climb yesterday? Just for a brief moment, open your mouth, talk to the Lord, and the Lord is going to take you higher. Tell him. Tell him. He can't fail. Tell him. Amen. <clears throat> Father, well, thank you. This is a moment to be unforgettable in every life. And therefore, Lord, I pray you touch, you transform, you take everyone from where they are to where they will be. Yeah. Every day to add something positive, something dynamic, to every life, yeah. every day to lift them higher than they were the previous day in Jesus' name. Yeah. Meet all their needs, yeah. solve their problems, yeah. heal their sicknesses, yeah. break every yoke, yeah. destroy the works of the devil, yeah. put the joy of heaven in their lives, yeah. and the strength and the power and the might to climb up, to go up, to achieve more, do in every life. <laughs> Everyone online that has participated, the same lifting power, the same unction, the same power, and the same advance, Lord, give to everyone in Jesus' name. No failure here today. No victim here today. No regrets in your life. No more sorrow. No more suffering. No more poverty. Abundant, adequate provision for every life. Confirm it, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Another amen. A global, global, global amen. Young eagles soaring. Yes. Already you have started. You will not stop, you will soar.
Is that all the clapping you can do? I, 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 yes. Keep on swearing. Keep on swearing. Amen. What should we do for our Father and the Lord? What should we do? What should we do? We need to give him a promise. Are you promising him that you will keep on swearing? Yeah. Are you telling me that obstacle will not stop you? Yeah. Are you telling me that you will not allow Satan to stop you? Yeah. Are you giving our Father and the Lord an assurance that you will make it in life and make it to heaven? God will bless your decision. Amen. Our Father, we are very grateful, sir. We are sorry. We will not stop, sir. And we will give you all our testimony. You will be hearing, sir. Amen. You will be hearing, sir. Amen. And God will preserve your life for us. Amen. Our pastor is a young soldier. He is a young soldier. Because old soldier never die. Moses received the ministry at the age of 80. Our father is just 81. Just one year in the ministry. One year in the ministry. Our father is swearing. Our father is swearing. And we will run after him. I will run after him. It is so in Jesus name. Clap for Jesus, clap for Jesus, clap for Jesus. Amen. Let's have our seat.